Um, the uh, service today, when we had the first two or three songs, I thought, wow, they're giving away my sermon. <laughs> uh, of course, the song leader had no, no idea what I was going to preach on. And I uh, had no idea what he might choose for songs. <laughs> But what I wrote on the top of my page is it's all about Jesus. That'd be a good title. I thought of it right here when we were singing the songs. That it's all about Jesus. Uh, underneath that I had this prophecies in the Old Testament of Jesus. And below that I had written uh, with the fulfillment in the New Testament. So I want to make the connections from the Old Testament to the New, New Testament. Of course, there's so many verses that it would just be impossible to touch on, what, half of them? <laughs> Quarter of them? There's 22 times in the book of Psalms that talks about Jesus and gives prophecies about Jesus. 22 times. Jesus mostly quoted in New Testament other people as well, but Jesus used certain books of the Bible, like um, like Isaiah and uh, and the Psalms. Jesus quoted from and told them, "They go to the prophets. You know, they speak of me. Uh, we need to know those major and minor prophets and see what's in them." Uh, Pearl, Pearl and I currently at home are going through uh, Elijah. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I get those mixed up all the time. They start with E, both of them, don't they? Uh, well, whatever. <laughs> but we're going through those, um, and it's amazing how many verses that you run across that seemingly are very, very important to you, just like I did here with Isaiah. So many verses that were very, very important to the New Testament believers. So you'd want to read the Psalms to find those 22 verses. Then there's 17 prophecies fulfilled in the book of Matthew. What are they? Hunt them up. Go for it. It's actually enjoyable to get into something like that and say, that many times? 17 times? What did he talk about? What are they? I could tell you them all here, and then you'd say, well, okay, I won't look them up. <laughs> the other way around is much better, isn't it? If you know you need to hunt them up and need to look for them. But there's 17 times that Old Testament uh, verses were used in, by the prophets. Then I got to thinking, you know, what about the, uh, the prophets themselves? Like uh, Nathan, Elijah, and Elisha, and his Isaiah, and Jeremiah, Daniel, and Amos. Seven prophets that are listed and, and where they prophesied the things about Jesus. Well, 2 Samuel chapter 12, and of course you can't read the whole chapter, I don't want to read all these verses to you, is Nathan. Talks about the uh, coming of Jesus and how Jesus would fulfill part of it. The, the, um, the references or the inference of a, of a Messiah coming or one that was going to be a great leader or a savior, uh, these different words that were used. But in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12 is Nathan. In 1 Kings chapter 18 is Elijah. In 1 Kings chapter 22 is Elisha. Prophecies about Jesus, about the coming Messiah. In 2 Kings 19 is about Elijah talking about the coming Messiah, or Jesus, the Holy One, or other words that were used, the special names for, for Jesus, the branch, and so on. Uh, those you need to look at. Uh, in Jeremiah 37 and 38, Jeremiah talks about it, same thing. In Daniel chapter 2 and 4, talks about Jesus' coming kingdom. Chapter 2 says, in the days of these kings. Kings are still working on the earth, still living on the earth, still ruling from some of those countries. In those days, God of heaven is going to set up a kingdom. He's going to put his king on that throne. The, the, uh, it's Daniel. Daniel 
talking about the Messiah coming. Uh, and then in Amos chapter 8 was the last of those seven prophets. You might want to look up Amos chapter 8 and find out what's there. Get some interesting thoughts from it. The stories told about Jesus' life, uh, can you tell the story? You know, we sing the song, I want to know the story, I want to tell the story of Jesus. Do you hunt it up? Do you find out what that story is all about? We need to. But at least there was uh, 20, 20 stories that you could look up about Jesus' life and, uh, and how Jesus told his story to others. And uh, of course, if you're talking about Jesus telling the story about himself or others telling about Jesus, where are you going to find him? Mainly in the four Gospels. So you really need to read the four Gospels, study the Gospels. As we read uh, the various places, uh, I'm going to look up some of these because I put stars by them because I think they're in this. I looked them up in various places just like you would on a computer. And I put stars by them. Is this one here? I'll take a little moment with this little booklet. There's 22 stories about Jesus. There's, uh, of course, they've got a shadow behind, so it can't be photocopied. <laughs> uh, there's 22 times here in the book of Psalms, but the stories are that God will declare the Messiah to be his son. Remember, God said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. That kind of idea. All things will be put under the Messiah's feet. That's in Hebrews. From, uh, from Psalms and fulfilled in Hebrews. The first one was from Psalms fulfilled in Matthew. Which I told you already there would be in the four Gospels and Matthew. Uh, then there's also Psalm 16.10. That says he will be raised from the dead. And that's fulfilled in Matthew and Mark, and so on. Uh, chapter uh, 22, 1 in Psalms, it says, God will forsake him in his hour of need. And, oh, that's one that you're not too happy about, is it? But that was fulfilled in Matthew as well, Matthew 27. In Psalm 22, he will be mocked and insulted in the four Gospels, Luke. Uh, chapter 22, 16 in Psalms, his hands and his feet will be pierced. That's very painful to think about, and John mentions that in the New Testament. Chapter 22, verse 18 in Psalm, Psalms, uh, they will gamble for his clothing. Of course, the Gospels again. In Psalm 34, it talks about no, uh, none of his bones will be broken. Gospels, Book of John. Uh, Psalm 35:11. He will be accused by ruthless witnesses. Of course, you read the four Gospels, you got it. Uh, in Psalm 35:19, he will be hated uh, without reason in the four Gospels. In chapter, Psalm 40, 7 and 8, he will come to do God's will. And that's mentioned in Hebrews chapter 10. In Psalm 41, 9, he will be carried, he will be betrayed, betrayed by a friend. Four Gospels. Uh, in Psalm 45, verse 6, his throne will be forever. That's Hebrews tells us about that. In Psalm 41, verse 9, he will be, be betrayed by a friend. This is the second time, but this is in Luke, but the other one was in John. So John and Luke both tell of that one. In uh, Psalm 45, 6, his throne will be forever from Hebrews. 
Psalm 68, 18, he will ascend to God's right hand. Four Gospels. In Psalm 69, 9, the zeal of God's house will consume, be consuming him. We have all his main drive. Uh, and that's, of course, the four Gospels. In Psalm 69, 21, he will be given gall and vinegar to drink when he was on the cross. We know that's the four Gospels. In Psalm 109, verse 4, he will pray for his enemies. God forgive them. That's the four Gospels. And in, in Psalm 109, verse 8, he, he is betrayed, his betrayer uh, office will be replaced. You know, that's in the first book of Acts where they had to fulfill his place. He fell away. So that's Acts chapter 1. In Psalm 110, verse 1, his enemies will be under his feet, as in Matthew. In Psalm 110, verse 4, he will be a priest like Melchizedek, or after the order. That's in Hebrews, right? In Psalm 118, verse 22, he will be the capstone, or cornerstone, capstone, so on, uh, is in Matthew. And Psalm 118, 26, he will come in the name of the Lord. That's in Matthew 21. These are things from the Psalms only that is carrying us into the explanations about who Jesus was. By getting to know all of the pieces, like that he's going to be the cornerstone, he's going to be the capstone, the head of the corner, and so these different things. If you have a pyramid, this head is the same as any other. You can lay it down any way you like. It's always a pyramid. Okay. <laughs> Jesus is the head of the corner and also the chief cornerstone. Okay. Um, so when you're reading the scriptures and you hear these different words stated that they're prophesying about Jesus, you realize, oh yeah, that's what that means. That's what this story is all about. That he is the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. Oh, what, what does that mean? Unless you connect it with the lamb that was being used as a sacrifice in the Old Testament and Jesus was a representation of that sacrifice. To understand the Bible teachings, that's what I'm just talking about, we need to read more and pray about these things so that we'll have the understanding of the prophecies about Jesus. There's some places you can look and they'll, it'll say that there's 40 prophecies. I don't know which group of these now. I'll just look. But I just had 20 from, from the book of Psalms and uh, 17 from other prophets. And here's another group. This is 17 with all the, the prophets. Uh, that are stated, but they're all in the book of Matthew. So I had that written up here. So I'm going to go to another one here. 17 plus 22 plus... <laughs> uh, some will say that there's 40. Some will say more. The seven prophets are mentioned in here in this little book separately. So I wanted to be sure and say that. And in this page, uh, Jesus' life and the story about Jesus. I wanted to think on that. We need to know the story of Jesus so that we tell others what Jesus did, what he lived like, what he walked like, what his mannerism, what his behavior was. So here's, in this little booklet, 20 different lines, one-liners, that are about Jesus' birth, about it, that he was uh, uh, worship the shepherds as shepherds, or the, he was worshiped by the shepherds. Uh, dedication of Jesus in the temple. Sometimes that story is not even told. We need to find out more about that story and tell it. Because that does away with a very quickly move, very quick move from his birth to Egypt. Couldn't be that way. It wasn't the same night that they left. It wasn't the same night that the kings of the east came. They begin to put the chronological order on what happened. He had to first go to be dedicated at the temple. Then the visit of the wise men then they escaped to Egypt. Then Jesus in the temple at the age of 12. 
Jesus' baptism. Jesus was tempted in the desert. In fact, when I go back just one notch here, Jesus' baptism, most people never hear that story. But there'd be no, no such thing about sprinkling. If you knew the story about him going to where John the Baptist was, not John the Sprinkler, John the Bapt, Baptist, yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, they don't think about that. If Jesus was sprinkling people, he could just take a bottle of the water from Jordan and take it up there and he, anybody who wants to baptize, just sprinkle them. You know, he'd have lots of water, lots of time to be able to do that. Otherwise, they all had to walk down to the river and it was a long way down there. Look at the elevation sometimes. Look up the elevation of, of Jerusalem and look up the elevation of Jordan River down there, about where it is. Okay. and find out how far it was to walk to be baptized. And Jesus went to John the Baptist. It wasn't the other way around. Jesus went to where John the Baptist was being doing his baptisms, and he said, I want to be baptized. He said, you know, I ought to be baptized by you. Not the other way around. Jesus said, no, wait a minute. We need to do this the way it ought to be done. Suffer it to be so now. And do, do your job, and I got to do my job. And so we always wonder back sometimes who did Jesus baptize? Or who, who was baptized by John? And did John get baptized by somebody? Those are things we don't need to worry about. God had that all figured out. Okay. <laughs> we don't need to have that all figured out. So, and Paul said, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you after what you turned out to be. Kind of, you know. He was scolding in a way that made them think. Are they following uh, Paul because of who he was and because he baptized them? He said, thank the Lord I didn't baptize you, otherwise you would have that excuse. Okay, so uh, we need to know the story of Jesus, including his baptism and his temptation in the desert, what that meant and why. Jesus chose his 12 apostles. Uh, the story of that we need to know. Uh, Peter says that Jesus is the Christ. Where? Oh, you need to find that. That's good. That's good. Jesus is transfigured. What, what does that mean? You need to tell the story. Jesus enters Jerusalem on a donkey. And it wasn't some other day of the week. It was actually on the Sabbath. Study that out. Find out what day of the week it was. Work your way backwards. It was on the Sabbath when he entered Jerusalem on a donkey. Jesus wept over the city of Jerusalem. He was weeping over Jerusalem. Jesus eats the Last Supper in the upper room. What's this about the upper room? Read it. Find out what, what the rest of the story was before they got that room and how they got the room. Who set it up for it? Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. You wonder what he was praying about. What were the situations around it? Where was the twelve? This is all real important to read and to be able to tell the story. Uh, the sixteenth one is Jesus is arrested and put on trial. I really wanted this sermon to be that portion. I thought maybe I should tell that portion. Building up to his trials and his, you know, how did he go from here to here to here to here? We need to know that, right? We didn't need to know that it wasn't just a one-stop deal. And who all examined him, and they don't do things kindly in those days. They questioned him, but they also beat him and so on. Jesus rises from the dead. You can see a couple of statements here. We've gone through a whole bunch of reading, a whole bunch of chapters, things that we need to know about. And uh, the next one is the risen Christ, uh, Christ, or Jesus, is seen on ten occasions. There's another page in here that shows 517 people that saw Jesus. We need to know those stories, be able to tell others that this 500 saw him at one time, and then this person saw him, and that person saw him, and that one, and that one, and that one. Okay? After his resurrection, and before he went on to heaven to be with his father. 
and then the ascension of Jesus. He actually went twice because once he said to his mother, don't touch me because I haven't gone to heaven, I haven't gone to the Father. Then later he said, here, handle me. Put your hands in my wounds if you want to. You want to see my wound in my side? And they handled him. He ate food and so on. Uh, and then he again went back to the Father. And they all watched him go. That's 20 times all of the verses in the four Gospels. The four Gospels. There's one more part here. I see I have a blue tag. We need to know the names that Jesus was called. Uh, no, let's see, I've got the page slipped here. On the, this one. Uh, there's names about Jesus. The, there's seven times Jesus said, I am. Oh, interesting reading, right? <laughs> uh, the parables of Jesus. There's 40 of them mentioned. And I guess they're all in the four Gospels, right? Must be. They are. They didn't hide one in here on me. <laughs> the parables of Jesus are all in the four Gospels. What did he mean by using things in parables? Well, first off, he said they can't take it any heavier. They can't take it direct. I have to give it to them in story form. The thing is, for us, it's a little bit different if you've never had a had animals like they had. They had the 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 sheep and the goats because of sacrificing. They had the, um, the other animals like uh, the oxen for plowing fields. They had the donkeys for walking with and so on. But you need to think about all these other animals. In fact, there's a list of all of the animals that are mentioned in the Bible. Wow, good deal. I'm starting looking through those. You get excited about these things that connect with Jesus. That was in his life when he was here. He knew what a donkey was wrote it. He knew it the sheep and the goats and those that had to die each well each month and then there was a yearly sacrifice. There was new moon Sabbaths that they had to off, make offerings. All these animals that Jesus knew and they were going to die for sins. Terrible situation. But we need to know some of those things so that we can tell the story of Jesus. I think I've got one or two verses in here that I want to look up as well. Um, oh, I did it with the little flags up the top of the page. That's what I did. That's different than all the other flags I've got in here. <laughs> the Messianic strain of the Old Testament, meaning the string attachment, the attachments and so on, or the reason for writing uh, about the Messiah is considered a strain of uh, belief or teaching. There is actually 15 pages in Halley's. Thank the Lord I'm not going to try to read them to you. <laughs> 15 pages. It must be important. If he put it in Halley's Bible handbook, it must be important. If you've got a copy, find them, read them. If you don't have a copy of Halley's, get one from somewhere like I do from the half price bookstores. And uh, the middle age of them is, is good ones, but the uh, 21st edition was it, or 23rd edition? Uh, look here in the front. The 23rd edition is the ones that I look for the most. And I'm saving them for my children and grandchildren as well, and keeping them. But all of the predictions and all of the places that you'd find them, 15 chapters, 15 pages, I mean, are very, very important. Um, then I'm going to go to one more place back here. The uh, There's uh, a list in this book of 45 Old Testament texts that talk about Jesus. And we need to know those texts so that we can tell Jesus' story. Tell the story of the one we love, the one we serve. 45. Well, then came to my mind years ago, thinking of it last night, that we used to use fingerprints to identify people. And if you took fingerprints from a number of people, they're all different. 
almost all different. And you could find nine points of similarity on this fingerprint and on the one that you've got that's the guy that's supposed to be guilty. And if they match the nine points, there was never another person in the world that would be able to fulfill it. It's nine to the ninth power. Nine times nine times nine times nine times nine, nine times. And there wasn't that many people in the world. Well, I guess there is now. It used to be three and a half billion when that was told. Now there's, what, seven, eight billion people in the world. So now what do they use? DNA. DNA is more accurate. More odds of being accurate to the one that's guilty. But even here, there's 45 places that identify Jesus Christ, of who he is, how you'd know him. If you took 45 times 45 times 45 times 45, it's an impossible task, isn't it? The numbers get astronomical. This person that's identified in these 45 pieces can only be one person, only one. You can't get a false person if you have 45 ch chances of being the right one. This is the Messiah. This is Jesus. We need to know all these things about Jesus so that we can tell others the story of the one who loves us. In less than a month, we will be at the commemoratory date of the whole story of the Last Supper, the washing of feet, the eating of the emblems of the unleavened bread and the unleavened juice, I like to think about. If the, the leavening represented sin, if it was in a lump of dough, leavening, Jesus said, the leavening of the those folks, or those folks, meaning the bad things that they did that they shouldn't be doing. And they were the scribes and Pharisees. <laughs> well, if you had a loaf of dough, and you put leavening in it, it would spread through the whole dough. That was a bad thing if you're talking about circumstances that shouldn't be there. Like a bad apple can ruin a whole barrel, okay? That kind of idea. So the leavening should not be in the bread because Jesus was perfect. He had no sin. He died not for his own sins, but the sins of the world. How about the juice that represents Jesus' blood? Same thing, it should be pure. Pure blood of the grape, as the Bible talks about. Okay, uh, in conclusion here, we are very close to the Lord's Supper, so we need to be thinking more about Jesus. It is all about Jesus. We need to be thinking about it. We should do a lot of praying, a lot of reading about Jesus, and what he's done for us, what it means to us because it secured our redemption. When Jesus went through this whole ordeal and died on the cross in agony and pain and many of the things that predicted exactly what happened to him, we should know about that it was predicted and that it did happen. One fellow talked about Jesus didn't go about making the prophecies come true. It's a little hard to be up on the cross dying and have guys, you know, control the guys that are gambling for your clothing. He went through some circumstances that just wouldn't happen by saying, this is the prophecy and it did happen. These are the things that were done. And Jesus made a, gave his life that we might be saved from sin and that we would have salvation by the grace of our Heavenly Father. May God bless you.